Rachel, you suck. Oh my God, you're like a total drag. Has anyone ever told you that? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the protagonists who are the worst thing about their own shows. We're including characters from ensemble casts who are central to the main story, but excluding animated TV. We'll also be talking about important plot points. A spoiler alert is in effect. Hello, Angel. Hello, Angel. Number 10, Jack Shepard, Lost. I've got to enter the court, I've got to push the button. Or what? Jack, you should let him on. Don't tell me what to do. Or what? What's gonna happen? Being the hero of an ensemble show is challenging, as the protagonist needs to hold things together. Jack Shepard carries such an arrogant attitude for most of his run in Lost that it's not the easiest to root for him. Despite becoming the de facto leader, Jack doesn't do much to tend to the group, apart from yelling at them seemingly as much as he can. You do it yourself. If it's not real, then what are you doing here, Jack? Why did you come back? Why do you find it so hard to believe? Why do you find it so easy? It's never been easy! From his crisis of faith to wasting time in a love triangle with Sawyer and Kaint, he overlooks issues that probably matter more to most of the characters. Most of the bad things that happen aren't his fault, but Jack's unstable mindset and stubbornness make it difficult for viewers to warm up to him. Jack, if what you're doing even works, you and Kate will be strangers, and she'll be in damn handcuffs. It's meant to be. Number nine, Meredith Grey, Grey's Anatomy. Many main characters are nice, likable, and engaging. Meredith is none of those. Apart from a select group of people, she's cold and aloof in general, including towards her own half-sister at first. We either adapt to change, or we get left behind. Sure, her troubled childhood played a part in making her this way, but Meredith also suffers from slow character development and an incessantly distant personality. Plot points about her romantic relationships generally go through recycle periods, following a similar template that gets predictable as the seasons roll on. You will always be that hotshot surgeon, and I will always be that young intern who fell in love with you. That's how you see yourself. That's your problem. I can't do anything about that. That is not how I see myself. That is the issue here. Add to that, other central members of the cast are simply more interesting. We'd rather follow someone charming like Lexi or exciting like Christina than put up with Meredith's dry attitude. Are we clear? Yes? That was four rules. You said... Five. Rule number five. When I move, you move. Number eight, Fred Figglehorn, Fred the Show. There has to be something science in here. Are you in there, science? Where are you, science? Come out, come out, wherever you are. Science, where are you? Shows aimed at a younger audience typically don't require as much depth in storytelling, but Fred the Show pushes this to the limit, featuring a main character with the ability to talk your ear off Apart from being extremely annoying, the character of Fred Figglehorn has no personality or reason to exist. The series is mainly about him landing in one problem or another, followed by his unfunny antics. But don't worry, my mom will be home in an hour. What are we supposed to do till Mommy Dearest gets home? Oh, there is plenty of fun stuff to do down here! Fred may have been okay when creator Lucas Cruikshank portrayed him on YouTube, but his shtick gets old by the first television episode. Watching his flat, unspiring, and at times infuriating behavior is a tall task to sit through, which is remarkable considering each episode only runs for 11 minutes. You can keep trying to get out. Thanks, Photo Fred. I really needed that. Number 7, Rory Gilmore, Gilmore Girls, and Gilmore Girls A Year in the Life. When things start out, we're inclined to excuse Rory's faults due to the inexperience of youth. She's bright, intuitive, and charming in her own way, but winds up making one wrong move after another. But he's married. You don't understand the situation. Is he still married? Yes, but then I understand the situation. It's not working out between them. They're not happy. Oh, Rory. After watching her break up a marriage, antagonize her mother, and become an outright boat thief, it becomes harder to defend her. It doesn't get better in the Netflix follow-up. Here, she can't even bother to remember her boyfriend, whom she's cheating on with her ex. Your guy. Paul. Paul, yes, Paul. Paul's not here. Paul's here. Who's Paul? Paul, my Paul, my boyfriend? Oh, crap, Paul is here. Why is Paul here? I invited him for dinner, and I totally forgot. The lack of accountability she takes for her actions doesn't help either, as Rory carries a largely unapologetic demeanor. If you want to see what happens when a nice girl turns bad, look no further than Rory Gilmore. I wouldn't do that. You know, leave things around for you just to... I wasn't accusing I know, you. I'm just... That... Look, we have an agreement. What happens in Vegas, stays in Vegas. Number six, Ted Mosby, How I Met Your Mother. Here's someone who constantly tries to convince people he's a nice guy, but in reality lives up to his classic Schmosby tag. <laughs> classic 
to come out with me. Ted is pushy and obsessive, never taking no for an answer. He whines about his failed relationships, yet pursues romances that are doomed from the start. While his friend Barney is shown as a womanizer, at least he's honest about who he is. And come on guys, Neil Patrick Harris. On the other hand, Ted claims the moral high ground while hitting on an engaged woman, guilting Robin to get rid of her pets and running away with his ex at her wedding. He also uses the memory of his deceased wife to get his kid's approval to pursue Robin again. Yet mom is hardly in the story. No. This is a story about how you're totally in love with Aunt Robin. And you're thinking about asking her out and you want to know if we're okay with it. Classic Schmosby indeed. Number 5. Emily Cooper, Emily in Paris. A series should probably be relatable when told from the perspective of the main character. However, that's far from the case with Emily Cooper, whose stay in Paris seems entirely artificial. I just slept off these bags five flights. This is the fifth floor. <sighs> in France, first the ground floor, then the first floor, then the second floor, and so on. That's weird. Emily puts in little effort to learn about her new home, but things conveniently fall into place. Everything from instant success at her new job, having the finances to live an upscale life, and finding hunky people to date happens seemingly without a hitch. This you and me, it's a it's a fantasy. It's a a Paris fantasy. Hey, 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 hey. It's not a fantasy to me. The lack of any particular edge to Emily's personality is off-putting enough to make her the weak link in her own series. We can't put ourselves in her shoes when all Emily seemingly does is coast through life with minimal consequences and little personal growth. Before I give this back to you, I have to delete some messages I sent you. All right, how many? Too many. <laughs> oh, Cooper, do you like me? Number four, Tedros, the idol. There's not much room for redemption when someone's supposed to be a sleazy, misogynist cult leader. And yet, Tedros manages to be even more despicable, mainly because the show glamorizes his flaws and the weak and shoddy portrayal of the character. Pop music is like the ultimate Trojan horse. You get people to dance, you get people to sing along, to say whatever you want. The idol tries to present Tedros as someone suave and cool, despite the obvious red flags he raises. With his drawn out mannerisms and weird demeanor, he's the kind of guy any person would want to stay away from. I know it might be hard for you to, to digest this right now, but I'm running the show. Okay. The series could have set Tedros up as a satirical take on the entertainment industry, but that's lost under a mountain of problematic behavior and excessively graphic content surrounding the character. I'm just, it's a party all the time. You know, I'm you just know, trying to keep it together. You know what? You're, you're absolutely right. I just want to show you something. Oh my god! Stop! Stop! Number three, Dawson Leary, Dawson's Creek. The danger with a character who's supposed to be likable is that they can buy into their own hype. This is what happens with Dawson Leary. Somebody who doesn't blow into town with their dysfunctional past to play mind games with the boy next door. Somebody who is capable of a healthy, committed relationship. And unfortunately, somebody nothing like you. He gradually sheds his positive traits to become insecure and self-centered. This is made worse by the controlling behavior he has around his love interests, damaging his relationships with Jen and Joey. Let's not forget who started this, okay? Let's not forget who pushed me towards Joey Potter in the first place. It was you! Pushed. Yes, it was you, because you couldn't be bothered! Because I didn't want to get hurt again, Pacey! I still had feelings for her, I still loved her! He also proves to be a poor friend, alienating those closest to him by really reciprocating their care and devotion. Dawson's personal conflict is a drag to follow for six whole seasons. It's hard to imagine anyone putting up with him for too long, so it's fitting he ends the series by himself. Because fiction is fiction. For the first time in a long time. <sighs> My life is real. Number two, Piper Chapman, Orange is the New Black. This series would have been exclusively about Piper's pity party if it didn't have an ensemble cast. It's a pretty big case. It's criminal conspiracy. That's what they charged me with. I carried a suitcase of money drug money, once. The main character continually drowns herself in her sorrows, not realizing her issues are of her own making. There are a lot of bigger problems at Litchfield Penitentiary, not that Piper notices or cares. Her initial stumbles stop being excusable soon, especially when the character inadvertently begins a white supremacist group just to stay on top of the prison's food chain. What I am trying to say is, will you join me on a quest to keep our hallways clean and our hearts pure of purpose? Even after she is released from prison, her character remains tiresome. Fortunately, later seasons start to focus more on the other inmates, although Piper still finds ways to annoy viewers. I am heartbroken. And I do not know what to do. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. 
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rachel Berry, Glee I didn't send her to an active crack house. But besides, how did you guys find out anyways? The Asian community is very tight. I just don't get it. You're better than this. No, she's an ambitious little freak who'll do anything to hold on to her power. If having the arguably worst teacher in the world in Will Schuster wasn't bad enough, Glee has perpetually conceded Rachel Berry as its protagonist. Whether it's cheating on her boyfriend or sabotaging a classmate's chances out of jealousy, Rachel can be fiercely vindictive. She truly believes the world revolves around her. Hello, Miss Holiday. I'd like you to know that I have a very severe bruise on my right buttocks from your game of gangster rap musical chairs. I'll be going on record with the school nurse later today. This main character has a channel-changing personality, filling reels with frequent rants mostly about how much she's entitled to one thing or another. It's good to know what you want and aim to be the best. What's not good is being as insufferable about it as possible. Rachel does achieve her goals in the end, but at the cost of the audience's support. To all of the boys and girls out there, I just want to say quickly before I walk off the stage that dreams really do come true, so thank you. Which TV main character gets on your nerves? Let us know in the comments. We, we, Trey good, Trey wonderful. Great. <laughs> Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.